And let me ask you about how you use this new communication internally with your forces. Um, in a, another book that I did called The Powers to Lead, I argued that no longer was command the king of the mountain issuing orders down. It was more like being in the center of a circle, attracting people in. And social media, very important for that. But in the military circumstances, you have other considerations. You have to think about security. After all, WikiLeaks shows how difficult it is. How do you manage that of using a blog or social communications and social media to be the center of a circle uh, and yet at the same time protect the legitimate security concerns? Yeah, that, that's a, a wonderful qu question and a great challenge. You probably know that the service chiefs themselves, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, were solicited with regard to uh, their willingness to continue to support social media. I mean, we had an internal debate within the mm -hmm. Pentagon as to whether or not uh, the reward of social media interaction was worth the risk. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, clearly uh, state the risk, and and that is the security of all that we do. Um, first, you know, firstly, I mean, we have to stay within the security um, realm that we're operating in. So, in social media. Uh, our interaction has to be at the unclassified level, and uh, and that's sometimes very hard. I mean, I'm often, you know, queried regarding uh, either opinions of or actual uh, occasions when operations uh, that can't be discussed, you know, have occurred. Uh, we have the same challenge with our young sa soldier sailors. If you can imagine, uh, on their ships, they have access to social media and themselves. Uh, are very inter interactive, more so than, than I'll ever be. And, uh, and I think keeping uh, their messages contained to within classification guidelines is a great amount of education, training, monitoring uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, if needs be, I mean, we'll constrain their access to social media, although we'd like very much not to. And I think it was a consensus among the Joint Chiefs that social media should be entertained. and that the, uh, the reward is worth the risk. Well, it is tough because of the nature of leadership today requires you to think horizontally, not just vertically. But uh, the nature of military security means you have to think also about protecting certain things should be kept secret. And so it is tough. What about cybersecurity in the larger sense, though? I, we've seen a number of cases recently of which that's becoming much more important as a national agenda item. Has this been a, in terms of, uh, we have a new cyber command at Fort Meade, but looked at from the point of view of Honolulu, how, how has your job been uh, changed or affected by the new concerns about cybersecurity? Uh, both in my previous assignment as Pacific Fleet Commander and now as Pacific Command, I've been working uh, cyber defense and the cybersecurity issue very hard for the past three and a half years. The advent of Cyber Command was a good one from my point of view because it enables now us to link more effectively with uh, the National Security Agency and, and um, other elements of national power to assist us in, uh, in cyber defense. Uh, there's also a great deal of discovery that has had to occur to understand where my authorities and responsibilities stop and, and another commander's begin or we range into homeland security domains or, or mm -hmm. broader commercial domains, all of which make up cyberspace, as you know. So this is a very, very tough challenge. PACOM is coming under attack every day, um, every day. And, and we're conducting uh, passive cyber defense, attempting to just mm -hmm. block accesses to our information. And thankfully, through the advent of, of commands like Cyber Command, we're able to explore more the legal ramifications and, and authorities uh, necessary to conduct active defense as well. Well, Deputy Defense Secretary Bill Lynn recently wrote an article in which he disclosed that one of the big breaches of cybersecurity recently for the U.S. military didn't come from electrons on the Internet. It came from somebody with a thumb drive who slipped it into a computer and uh, breached our security. How do you deal with that type of problem? Uh, we, uh, for a, a long period of time, restricted anyone from using thumb drives while we sorted out the answer to that question. Uh, there 
are many ways in, as, as you're well aware. And, uh, you know, with the advent of the Internet, with, uh, with both classified and unclassified networks uh, at so many uh, military members' disposal, operation security is a tremendous challenge. And it wasn't until that event occurred that we, uh, we understood the risks attendant with um, other apparatus that, uh, you know, w were convenient but nonetheless accessed some of these very sensitive um, networks. Uh, so it, this is, ag again, a great deal of education and training as well as oversight of one another and oversight um, uh, by our administrators to ensure that we're not penetrating into our own systems. We've become uh, much better, I think, at understanding uh, both the need for firewalls, locations, the need for sensing, uh, and our own levels of awareness of what is occurring in inside our systems so that we can intervene when, when you know, uh, problems like that crop up. And finally, <coughs> uh, it, this is a tough question, but it's like a Rorschach test. Anything that comes to mind is fine. What would you say is your greatest challenge today as the leader of American forces in the Pacific? Uh, I think managing the China relationship mm -hmm. tends to dominate my discussions in all 36 nations in the area of responsibility. I think truly, uh, you know, the need to get this right is in not only U.S. interest, but the Asia Pacific's interest and the broader globe's interest. Uh, this is um, perhaps the challenge of the 21st century, uh, to have the United States and China relationship work to everyone's benefit. I, was, uh, I attended the strategic and economic dialogue with Secretary Clinton and I was struck by the richness of engagement in many aspects of our relationship with China. Uh, I think by comparison the military to military relationship uh, has risks attendant to it and, and the need for ver that very careful balance uh, of attention that you alluded to earlier. Uh, this is something we we must get right. Well, thank you very much for visiting with us today, and I must say I'm glad we have such a leader in the Pacific. Thank you, Dr. Nye. It was a pleasure to be here. Nice to see thank you. Thank you, sir.